Meistens. Teuer. So, today we are going to discuss about a, a one of the topic which is belongs from the discussion. Already in the previous case, we have discussed the topics of what happened if anaerobic respiration occurs in our body. What happens if aerobic respiration occurs in our body? And what type of changes it will occur? The metabolism also we discussed. But now today we are going to discuss about types of respiration. We are going to discuss about the types of respiration, how its path is happening in different different organisms. So that we are, we know, we are taking a breath by lungs. Yes, the energy can, the oxygen can be stored in lungs. So our respiratory organs can be stored by through the nose we can take it. But not all organisms are take this type of same of method of the respiration. So what type of thing? For example, in our atmosphere, or in our environment, the plenty of the living organisms, even human beings, like some animals, like a fishes and birds and trees, the plenty of the organisms are protected in our environment. But these are cannot aspire to the same purpose because we are living on land and suppose fishes are living in water and some type of amphibians like any frogs are can be living in water on our land also. So they are a specialized developed organs for respiring. So what type of those? So now today we are going to discuss about some type of the respiration. You can show tracheal respiration, branchial respiration, cutaneous respiration, and pulmonary respiration or buccoparental respiration method. These are some type of the respiration methods which are happening in different living organisms and different animals. So those are saying tracheal respiration, branchial respiration, cutaneous respiration and buccoparental or pulmonary respiration. Actually what is type of respiration? So first of all we should discuss about the name a tracheal respiration. Now what? Tracheal respiration. It means the tracheal respiration which occurs in example of the organism, for example, grasshopper. Example of grasshopper. You know the grasshopper. It's a one type of insect. They don't have like a, what the organ has to us, like a nose. They don't have a type of nose, the type of organ. They have some specialized spines are present there. They have specialized some a small holes are, which are can help to be transportation of the gas. And for this one, they have specialized channel work also present there. One network also present there. By the network, the gases can be exchanged into inside to outside and outside to inside. They can inspire and expire. So those types of they have a some specialized holes on the body. For example, if you can see if it is a grasshopper on the side of the body, on the side of the body, we have some special holes are present. We have some special holes are present. These holes holes are called as spirals. Those are called spiracles. These spiracles are helping to that how we have no soul, that how we have nostrils. I mean say nostrils in the two holes what we have no soul. That's called nostrils. Same as well as in the grasshopper, there are some of the holes are presented lateral side of the body, that means side of this body. The lateral side of the body, we have some holes. These holes are called spiracles. And these particles are connected with any one system, one tube system. That tube system is called as trachea. That tube system is called as trachea. So 
these particles are, are connected with the name, some, uh, some tube like system. These tube like system can be connected throughout the body. This tube like system can connect throughout the body. These are called trachea. So, by the force, the particles have to be changed in the taking of the gases from environment, from atmosphere, and when the gas enters through the spiracles, the by the channels, the, through the way, the gas can go into the gas hopper, and it will be happen some respiration of the inside of the body. Again, the, if we talk about the respiration metabolism, again the which is a gas is not necessary for the body to come outside. Okay, so they have a specialized trachea system. That's why this type of respiration is called as tracheal respiration. Understand? That's why this type of expression is called as tracheal expression. The so, tracheal expression you can see in a grasshopper. Okay? And some insects are coming like this type of tracheal expression. And this one is called branchial expression. Okay? Branchial expression means, you know, some type of the living water which are living in the water. For example, fishes. Example of fishes. These fishes have a specialized organ system which are called gills. <coughs> which are called gills. These gills are helping to exchange of the gas. We know the fishes are living in water. We can take the oxygen from a coffee day to bring it by gases, by state of the gas. But these fishes are they living in the water, they are unable to take the atmosphere gas. So they will take the gases, they will take an oxygen which is mixed in the water. You may have how the gas is mixed in the water. You know, the formula of water is H2O. Yes, yeah? here doesn't it? To hydrogen molecules and all oxygen molecules. These oxygen will take from the water, the fishes are. Fishes are these of them are By them, they have specialized organ which is helping for respiration, that is gills. The gills are located in the place of the parents, the place of sleeping gills and find out. You can see the side of fishes, you can see some type of shapes are presented. Looks like the ears, but not exactly that is, it looks like that one. So those are inside if you can open that there are some gills are presented. So, whenever the time the fish is, will be taking the water, they can open the mouth and close the mouth. When they are taking the and open the mouth, the, they will drink the water to the mouth. When they are swimming in the water or when they are living in the water, they can take the water and the water can contain the hydro hydrogen and also oxygen. So, which is oxygen is present in the water that will take and that will pass through the mouth and it will reach in the place of the where the place of gives. And through that the gills open the remaining water coming out. Okay, the water can go, the water will not go into the stomach. Remember one thing, the fishes will not drink the water. I mean say when they breathe in time, they drink the water not for to fill the stomach. They're taking the water to get oxygen. So the water they are taking the water and the water can pass into the place of where the gills are presented. And the gills are, can absorb the oxygen portion here which contains of the water. The gills are have to be take the water, sorry, the gills have to be take oxygen which is present in the water some kind of oxygen present. The oxygen they will take. And the water which is not getting oxygen they will be sent outside to the place of the gills in the parents place. So, so these fishes are, are taken the water by branchia. So, this type of respiration is called as branchial respiration. The respiration which is occurs through this, it is called as branchial respiration. It's a one type of the respiration method. And the next one is called cutaneous respiration. The next one is called cutaneous respiration. What it means of cutaneous respiration means there you can see. Example of the cutaneous respiration like a earthworm. Earthworm. Okay, these earthworms are, are living in the soil. 
but how they can they don't have a expression organ like gills or they don't have a expression organ like in a trachea they have a specialized organ which is skin the skin is a moisture skin is have to be taking off daily taking off oxygen also so that means when they are going deep into the land the land have contained already water that means the soil contain the water so which is the water contains in that water i told you already oxygen is present but the oxygen is taken by skin the oxygen is taken to the skin so the respiration which is occurs through the skin the respiration which is occurs to the skin it is called as cutaneous respiration the respiration which is occurs to the skin it is called cutaneous respiration This type of respiration we can see in a frog also, but frogs we can see two types of respiration. I mean, say a cutaneous respiration also, and one more type also we can see. Okay, the next one is called pulmonary respiration. Pulmonary respiration. It means some type of the living organisms are they taking a breath. Some type of living organisms are, for example, of the frog. I can tell human beings also. Frogs and human beings also. They can be respired through the lungs. They can respire through the lungs. That means we are taking a breath. The oxygen or the gas is being stored in the base of the lungs. The gas is being stored in the base of the lungs. That type of Other type of respiration is called as pulmonary respiration. So the respiration which is occurs through lungs, respiration which is also through lungs. That type of respiration is called as pulmonary respiration. Is also called as vasopharyngeal respiration. These are some type of respiration which is help to exchanging of the gas in a human being or in the base of the Frogs, but we can see the frog is an example of the amphibian. Frog is an example of the amphibian. Okay, that means the amphibian can live in water also, or they live on land also. So that we can see, so earthworm. is also one type of the respiration or like it is have we can be exchange the gas to skin not only that it also i told that frog also it can be exchanging of the gas by the moisture skin it can exchange gas by moisture skin as well as like it is frog also frog can be participate in two types of it is when they are living on land they can be respire to the lungs and so the living in water they can respect to lungs if the frogs are living in water or if they are, if they are going into the water they can be exchanging the gases to skin they can absorb the gas to skin so the frog can be participate in a two types of respiration it is okay so it is happens of the cutaneous respiration and also the type of the pulmonary respiration So these are some type of the respiration methods which are can help to be the conscious of the life in different organisms. So these are the four types. One is tracheal respiration, which is example of the grasshopper. They can respire to the tracheal. And the next one is called branchial respiration. It's a type of respiration which is occurs in fishes and by gills. The respiration occurs to the gills. And next one is called cutaneous respiration. The respiration occurs through skin. For example, of the earthworm. And the next one is called pulmonary or coccopharyngeal respiration, which is occurs respiration through lungs. Which is called pulmonary respiration or coccopharyngeal respiration, which is occurs in human being or frogs. These are the type of the respiration. Is I am saying about in a different animals respiration. But how plants can exchange the gases? Okay, not all plants. Like me, I'm saying that some of the plants which are living on land, how they can respire? How they can exchange the gases?
The next one is a type of respiration in plants. Okay, so we can have discussed about the four types of respiration in different animals, but now we are going to discuss about the respiration in plants. Respiration plants, how they can respire. We have a, a specialized organ which is called the chamber of gases. That is a nose, and the gas can be stored in the base of the lungs. But the respiration will occur in a plant. They have a specialized organ that name is called stomata. The name is called stomata. These are very spine folds are present in the leaves. The leaf contains a very spine hole. The spine hole is called stomata. These stomata are helping to the exchanging of gases in organisms like in plant. Okay. So whenever, whenever the time when the in the in a in atmosphere there are some type of gases are present like in oxygen and carbon dioxide and nitrogen. The gas is taken to the exchange by the stomata. The spine holes of the stomata can absorb the oxygen or the carbon dioxide. They can be taken inside, and they are gas helping for the metabolism of the body, and the, which is the gas is not necessary for the plant will be sent out directly into the stomach. So it is a respiratory organ in a plant. But some type of the plants are, I mean to say, some of the plants are living in a, in the place of where there is a coordination of the fresh water and also salt water. The type of mangrove forest, the type of plants are called mangrove plants. Mangrove plants. Okay, this type of mangrove plant. That means some type of plants are which are living on land. They are where these are mangrove plants. Most of the cases in the mangrove forest. Okay, they are they can be respect to stomata also. They have as well as they have some roots helping for the respiration. The roots are called aerial roots. The roots are called aerial roots. These aerial roots are helping for exchanging the gas. You know, the plants can be exchanging gases by through stomata only below. Still now we know the topic. But now upgraded to you, that is another topic is aerial roots. The aerial roots means aerial means outside of the land, surface of the land. Some roots are coming to be surface of the land. If you can see the text looking in the side, some roots are coming surface of the land. That land, the, the, the roots have contained a specialized organ which is going to have to be exchanged in the gas. Maybe on the stem also, or on the stem or the roots also, they can find out, you can, you can see some spine, spine folds are present there, though they have to be exchanged in the gas. That is not called stomata, it is specialized in that is called lead cells. Lenticels. So these type of lenticels are can help to be exchanging the gas. They, we can see on the mangrove plants on the stems will be present. So why that matter? The plants can be exchanging the gas. So they don't have stomata. That means we can be respect to the aerial roots by the help of the lenticels. The lenticels have to be exchanging the gas. So these are a different type of respiratory organs are are present in different organisms. These are different type of the organs are present in different organisms. So it is not not all living organisms which are living on environment they can respond the same method they can respond different different method. These are called the one type of the method in which we see in a plant. Understand? So that is the we are going to discuss. And I would like to ask the question to you: Can seeds also respire? For example, if I can ask you, the seed is a living being or non-living being? A living thing or non-living thing? If I ask the question, we have a confusion. Seed, it may be living thing or it may not be living thing. If you can keep in any in a bowl or in a jar in your in your home or use the kitchen you know, kitchen box for preparing some food items, it is a reactive matter. But whenever the seed can get a suitable condition for growth, if you can throw on land, whenever you can get the water and the heat and also soil support and sunlight, they can be living trees. 
they will turn secondary in winter. So these will be opposed. So, so that's why the seeds are called as intermediate stage. They are they are coming to the intermediate stage. They may not be living beings or they not be non-living beings. Whenever they can get any solarization, they can grow. If they are not getting the solarization, they won't grow. So that's why it's a seed. So all living beings can be affected with this one. Which are all living beings are in the form of nature that all can be affected. So we are discussing now. We are find out the thing here. Can germinating seeds can be affected? Like a sprouted seeds can sprout seeds also affect or not? That is we are going to discuss. Okay, so that is uh, for example some different type of seeds. Some you can you can select any type of seeds. For example, we are taking the groundnut. Okay, we are taking the groundnut also can be the seeds also no problem. So now I would like to aspire. Can seeds can sprouts can aspire? Okay, the topic is about you know, like we are explaining by experiment. Uh, I am there. Okay, can seeds or can sports seeds aspire or not? Okay, to respect that you know, the registration method will offer. For example, they are taking the oxygen and they are using carbon dioxide. This is the main way, you know that. All respiration, if they are registered offer, they can take the oxygen, they can release carbon dioxide. So, carbon dioxide release in order we have to confirm. To confirm that, we need some material. The so, carbon dioxide confirmation test, we are doing the main for liquid. The liquid is lime water. Liquid is lime water. So our aim is can seeds, can sprouted seeds just by sprouted or uh, germinated. Uh, can sprouted seeds or germinated seeds just by or not? That is our aim. We are ready to confirm that. And our procedure, for example, we need some apparatus. We need some apparatus or uh, required materials. Uh, we need some for material of a glass jar, which are convertible of glass jar. It should be transparent glass jar. And we need some ground seed. And we need some lime water. And we need a glass jar lid, as also cork. Okay, we need some. These are uh, materials uh, we need for the to be made stuff. And what is the procedure? The procedure to us take some. So this is the the way of experiment how we should do. So take some grounded seeds and also soak in the water. It takes some ground acids and soak in water and means deep in the water some time. And after that time, they take all the seeds uh, and they also tie it in one cotton cloth. We tie that into the cotton cloth and we hang in the field where the sunlight is available. Hang the, hang the seeds are where the sunlight is available. Why? Because if you can you have now provided water by soaking and now you can do in front of the sunlight. If the two conditions present there, the plant the seeds can be grown. That means they can be sprouts and they can be germinate. So the same will be taken us. And after the next day you can find out, if you can open that one, then we can see that some of the seeds can be some of the seeds can be sprouted, some green color radicals coming outside. Okay? So that type of green radicals are coming outside. Now take a jar. Take a jar, glass jar, and uh, keep inside the sprouted seeds all. And keep inside the lime water. Why should we have to use the lime water? Use? The lime water we have to be confirm the carbon dioxide release or not. Confirm the test for the carbon dioxide. 
that's why you take a lime water and you kept inside the coated shoe ok so now take one jar and arrange this one how the dry will show and keep inside the coated seat and keep on side in a small jar the lime water and take complete approaches and keep in some lime take this complete arrangement and keep it in some lime and if you can leave the some lime and if you observe the after 30 minutes or some time, you can find out this lime water will turn to be milky white. The lime water turns to be milky white. If the lime water is turns to be milky white, if the lime water is turns to be milky white, the confirmation for the plants or the spotted seeds are releasing the carbon cells. If they are releasing carbon cells, means they are we are respired, we are passed through the respiration process. This is one of the confirmation as for to prove the sported seeds or germinated seeds are can respire or not. Okay? Okay, and next one I'm going Next one more experiment, same in the method by using all the same seeds. Now we are doing this one. The spotted seeds are generated seeds are can be released heat. The spotted seeds are generated species can release heat or not. You know, whenever the tender is the part the living beings can produce the heat. So these are now living beings, spot seeds are living beings. Can they can be participating in the or can they produce heat or not? Same as the lab. We need to say my first like any glass jar and we need spotted seeds and we need for Instead of that one, to find out heat, we need a non equipment that is called on thermometer. We need thermometer. Why? Because thermometer has to be find out the heat. We don't need here lime water because we are not doing test for carbon dioxide, we are not actually doing test for the respiration, we are doing test for produce heat or not. So that's the reason we use a thermometer and glass jar and sport test. Now the procedure is take the seeds which are in again the jar. Okay, take the name jar and take the keep inside seeds or which are spotted seeds. Okay, keep inside all the spotted seeds. And now we are being tested for to produce of heat or not. For confirmation, we see we should take one thermometer through the single hole pop, take the pop which has contained the single hole, and keep inside the thermometer through the pop. And which is ending of that thermometer has contained the mercury. The mercury should be deep into the inside of the seeds. The mercury bulk should be deep inside of the seeds. Why? Because the heat can produce here, you can find out. Okay? Now take a an jar and keep inside some spotted seeds and arrange the single hole cork and through the hole inside the seed that for lay out the thermometer. Okay, and keep inside. The mercury ball should be deep into the place of the seeds. And take a total apparatus and keep it somewhere in some way. Release, release in the area. For example, keep in place. And after some time, you can observe, we can find out the temperature levels can be grown in the thermometer. The temperature can be grown up, it will be increased. The temperature will be increased. So if it is the temperature is increased, that means of the stored seeds are can be can be produced heat. So that is the it is two or the experiments are very important for the public examination So one is the green plants can be released carbon dioxide and take oxygen is right or wrong, the stored seeds. And second one is, can they coated seeds or generated seeds be produce heat or not? The two conditions that we done. For the first experiment, we use lime water. For the second experiment, we use the thermometer.
Okay, these are the very important experiments for you. Okay, and I have told you this from previous class. So we are taking an example. If you are doing a more exercise, if you are doing a more exercise, if you are doing more hard work, you will get some pains in the muscles. I said you that is why uh, accumulation of the accumulation of lactic acid acid. Accumulation of lactic due to the accumulation of the lactic acid that will be we are getting some muscle pain that I can explain to you muscle fatigue. That's the muscle fat. Okay, so I am when I am covered up, whenever like lying on the surface, it can form in that muscle cell. We have been replaced. What happened that time? It happens of the anaerobic respiration. Due to the anaerobic respiration, the lack of oxygen or absence of oxygen, the lactic acid form in the muscle. Due to that process, we get the muscle pains. So that reason, we have to replace that is to to make the lactic acid. We have replaced the oxygen. So that we are taking the more oxygen. When we are taking it, taking it somewhere, we are getting very more oxygen. That oxygen, what we take to replace the lactic acid to clear the problem, that oxygen is called as oxygen depth. The situation is called as oxygen depth. Okay, remember this is a very important concept. It is a some type of the aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration exercise. And some more experiments in the respiration in, in the next lesson we will discuss in the next class. Okay, thank you.